visiting some old friends. The old neighborhood. Hmm, where am I? Where am I today? Ah, Zuccotti Park. Zuccotti Park. Occupy. <laughs> Home of Occupy Wall Street. What if you, what if you robbed the bank? What if you and your friends, a little, a little hypothetical. What if you and your friends robbed the bank? Right? You got away with a million dollars. Million bucks, right? And you got caught. Oh shit, you got caught. You got fucking caught. Stealing a million dollars. What would you do? Right? And then, and then you find out the consequence, the fine, the sentence for robbing the bank is one dollar. Huh? <laughs> That's the consequence. Huh? Would you do it again? If you, got, if you robbed a million dollars from a bank and you got caught and you were fined one dollar in total, your whole sentence, would you rob another bank? Of course you would. Ah, welcome to Wall Street. Zuccotti Park. This was the final frontier, 2011. A couple of brave souls camped out in this, in this very park and were thrown out, dragged out by their feet by the NYPD. Okay. Does history repeat itself? Okay. It'll be different this time. Ah, different. No, no, no. That was then, this is now. That was then, this is now. <laughs> does history repeat itself? <laughs> Damn right it does. So, I come down here once in a while. I still have friends. Okay? And what is the big concern? What is the crash? Remember we talked about a crash? I talked about a crash six months ago. And then the market went straight up. <laughs> Ah, oh, head fake, right? That's just a head fake, right? So, uh, so right now, right, subprime, let's talk about it. A couple of years ago, 2008, right, subprime mortgages, right? All these, all these debts stacked on top of, of mortgage, right? $600 billion worth of, worth of debt, right? Subprime mortgage. Crises, right? Leverage, 40 to 1. <laughs> 40 to 1 leverage. You know what that is? If you don't, look it up. That means if your stock goes down a dollar and your leverage, it goes down $40. You're screwed if it drops. That was a subprime mortgage crises. Let's take a walk. Walk down Wall Street. Right, that's what happened, right? So that was $600 billion. Ah, good old Fed. Printed money, got him out of it. Ah, endless, endless funds from the Federal Reserve. Much different environment down here. There's all the bankers and the brokers. There's Trump land. Ah, talking big business. Okay. <laughs> this is different than the, the. This is much different than the sissies in the park, right? <laughs> But anyway, I want to talk about the crash because it's coming. My inside sources tell me that it is coming. Oh my God. Hold on. So, $600 billion subprime mortgages. Right? They said, AIG turned around and said, AIG went down $50 billion, Right? They were out $50 billion. Goldman Sachs turned around and says, give us our, we owe, you owe me $50 billion. We want our fucking money right now. Give us the fucking money. Right? And what happened? Henry Paulson at the side, at the time, knocked on George, the young George Bush's door and said, we got a problem. Right? <laughs> and what did George Bush do? And Congress do? They gave a blank check mentality to, to, con to Congress and the Fed. Start printing money and get us out of it. Yeah, they'll pay it back someday. <laughs> yeah, they're going to pay it back. Yeah, they already paid it back. 
That's what they tell us. Right? Oh, they paid it back already. They didn't pay it back. So what does that have to do with now, right? That was then, this is now, right? We're better now, right? It's a different time. No, no, we figured all that shit out. We figured it out. And um, you, just, you just don't know because you're a socialist and you don't understand, you don't understand big finance and, and money and how, how money flows, right? Right? Trying to cross the street. It could take an hour here. So, ah, the street with walls. They call Wall Street. Wall Street. All right, so, so right now the sub the the subprime mortgage debacle is not going to be the new debacle. I've been saying all along that we're in a debt market. That we're that there's a debt bubble. I almost <laughs> get hit by a cab. Get hit by a cab on live television. On live internet. Oh, this is new. It's like a tunnel that leads to Wall Street. Ooh, I feel so important. I'm in the tunnel. In the tunnel of love. All right, so, so that was $600 billion, right? In subprime mortgages, right? Banks froze. They didn't trust each other, right? They're not gonna trade with each other. Ah, they all said, fuck you, we'll take, that's my money. <laughs> Goldman Sachs led that whole charge, got the credit to false swaps, right? Remember? Right? Bad market, right? And six months before that, everything was fine. Oh, we're doing great, right? Markets are, markets are good, they're strong. <laughs> so the debt market, right? What, is that? what does that mean, right? What does debt market mean, Karthi? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. You mean what, like credit card debt? Well, sort of. Uh, right now, the United States, right? These corporate corporations have, I'll just rattle off some of the known debt. Right? They're sitting on 1.15 trillion in leveraged loans, right? It's a, it's a, it's a market, it's a new market, CLO market. <laughs> it's not a new market, but it's a new, it's the new hit. It's a new attack, right? The CLO markets, right? 1.3 uh, trillion in student loans. That's for the poor people though, right? We'll force you to pay until the day you die. But the corporate market, when they default, they don't want to pay. They want to turn around and say, no, 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 we're not paying. Down on Wall Street. Right? So right now, let's do the math. 1.3 trillion. Nice backdrop for this one. Ah, the New York Stock Exchange, the head of the snake. The eye of the tiger. Satan itself. It's like visiting hell when you come down here. You're down in, you're down in hell. There's hell. Hell! So you got 1.3 trillion in, in, in corporate debt. Right? Leveraged loans. CLO market. <clears throat> 1.3 trillion in student loans. And then there's another, another mysterious one, right? This other mysterious loan. It's a, it's 2.5 trillion in B bonds. <laughs> that's, that's junk bonds, right? Remember we, we were done with the junk bonds? The, you remember? Remember the junk bond scam? Well, we're right back where we started, right? Nothing has changed is the point, right? But, well, actually it has changed. Because at the time when the markets crashed and, and we were in really big trouble, you remember? Remember we got, you remember George Young Bush looked into the camera and says, we got a big problem. Remember when he said that? Well, now that was 600 billion corporate debt, right? That was $600 billion in corporate debt. Now, are we doing better than that? No. Right now, we have almost three times that, right? In the, if, you, if you calculate from 600 billion subprime mortgage, and right now you have probably about three times that You've got the student loans. You've got the CLO business debt, the B bonds. Forget about all and the credit cards. The people that are holding credit cards. The debt bubble. I've been saying it all along, right? They say, "Oh, no, Conti, you're wrong. The market's so strong. Oh, fucking stock market. My 401k is so fucking good." Right? That's what you're saying, right? 
saying a 401k, right? That's it, that's, everything is in the market, right? Hypothetical. Another hypothetical, right? Say, for example, the stock market takes a turn. Let's say, let's say a socialist wins the presidency. A social guy that wants universal single-payer health care. <laughs> then what happens? What happens? What happens then when all of those insurance companies go out of business and they're holding all that debt? <laughs> and they can't pay. What happens? They go bust. Right? And who flips the tab? Right? You do. I do. We do. We're right back in the same problem because there's no consequence, like I said. They stole a million dollars and will find one dollar. They like that deal. So they stole, this time they stole three million dollars. And what's going to be the fine? Three bucks? That's the crises that we're, we're, we're faced with right now, right? Leverage loans, right? And, you know, trade tensions now. To add to that, it's just piling on, right? Because anything can trigger it. Trigger it. I gave you one example of, for example, universal single-payer health care for all, getting the middleman out of the way, sinking the, 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 um, the pharmaceutical business that's killing us, and the insurance, health insurance, is killing us, right? You sink all that, that could trigger it, but there's more. You could trigger it through trade tensions. Donald J. Trump, the, 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 the business... The business genius, zero, zero percent interest for banks. Just keep borrowing, keep printing that shit. Just keep printing it. Keep printing. Keep printing it. <laughs> Standing out here in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of Wall Street, screaming. <laughs> Ooh, better I can. I don't give a shit about. It. I don't give a shit about anybody. Don't run me over, mate. Fucking guys running right at me. So. So you got trade tensions, you got China, you got China. Ah, fuck you. Babe, we don't pay 20, we don't pay 25%. You're crazy. Take your 25% tariff, stick it up your ass. That's what they're saying right now. Trump wants to jack them up to 25%. Right? <laughs> that could cause a trade war because, because, it, because it has a domino effect, right? Now, now they're paying 15%, they need to pay 15% more for our, for items that they're leveraged 40 to 1, right, that could trigger it. Right, that's your, they can't pay. Right, nobody can pay. Right? Or messy Brexit exit. Don't, don't underestimate that. The shit that's going on in France, Yellow Vest. Right? Italy, Spain, right? The whole thing is just, it's just waiting to collapse. Right? It's just waiting. It's just going to fall. Right? Right? You got zombie corporations. You know what those are? Corporations that don't make a nickel. They, they would have been bankrupt a year ago. <laughs> they would have been bankrupt five years ago if it wasn't for zero, zero interest rates like life support. I've said it a long time ago. They're on life support. Okay. Lowering credit standards. They give, they give credit away, right? Hey, anybody can get credit. All you need is a corporation. You got a nice fancy corporation. Oh, it's all corporate. Corporatized. It's legal. Right? It's all legal. Right? Walk by the Fed. Uh, it's all legal. It's legal stealing. Yeah. It's okay to steal as long as you're wearing a suit. That's why I got my suit on today. <laughs> uh, ah, everything, nothing's illegal if 10 businessmen say so. Ah, it all becomes legal. So that's what I'm saying, right? I, I told you a long time ago that the, um, that the crises would be a debt bubble, right? In the form of corporate, corporate debt. Corporate bonds, right? And I stand by that, right? It's so not a market. It's all the answers are always in the stock market, right? Right now the market is it's bubblicious. Bubblicious. It's so it's so high you can't stand it. Federal Reserve is over there somewhere. Look at that shit on the street, man. You tried to run that over with your car. Right? Well you couldn't get in here, but you'd have to come the other way. It'd smash into it. They keep you they keep you out. They want you out. You know what's cool too, man? The roads here. 
Cobblestone. See that? Old cobblestone roads. It's pretty beautiful, actually. But there's so much evil that goes on in here. So much, so much greed and mis mis misinformation. Students are trained in the high arts of, of, of Wall Street speculation. MBA. PhD MBA. Ah. Uh, Series 7 stockbrokers. It's also legal. It's also, it's also professional, right? The theft of a million dollars and paying a dollar as a fine. That's what it is, right? This is legalized theft down here. But somebody has to pay that, bill, that million dollars. When the, ca when the house of cards fall, when the house of cards fall, someone has to pay, right? And that will be the next bubble. That will be the next the next collapse. And then maybe through that pain, just maybe, just maybe, maybe, maybe. Right? See, that's why when I say the Democrats and the Republicans are the same animal, they have the same donors. That scenario that I just painted for you, that whole ugly picture of Wall Street, the money comes, the, the, the way a senator raises $50 million to become senator is from these people down here. These are the people that give them the money. And then what do they get for it? They get to rob a million dollars and only pay three. Right? Or a dollar. Right? They get away with murder. No crime. It's not a crime. No, no, see, white collar, white co that's, that's when you, we launder money and embezzle money and, and we, we play tricky games in the market. That's just, that's just, that's just business. That's, all, that's not stealing. You know, I know, I know, I know. People lose their houses and, 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 and they, you, you lie to them and you put them in, in debt that they couldn't pay. But that's, that's just, that's business. That's speculation. May the buyer beware. Right? So ultimately, it's hot potato, right? When the market collapses, these guys pass the potato to you. You think your 401k is secure? Right? That's what you're holding on to? My 401k, my retirement program, right? That shit tanks, right? Your money is the first money they throw. They, you're the first people they throw under the bus, right? They sell the shit out of you, and they, they short that market all the way down. Yeah, yeah, they lose some money, but it wasn't real money anyway. Yeah, it was a little speculation. They got their, they got their $23, billion, $23 million compensation package. They got their guaranteed traders, million, $2 million a year. They don't care. Oh, yeah, you know, I didn't make $10 million, but I still got two. They don't care. They don't care. Right? So, so you know, the inevitable crash, right? I'm already 18 minutes, so I'll shut up now. But it is a beautiful place. It's a beautiful old building. It's not really the market. The mar this isn't the market. The market is, is everywhere. Computerization. Decentralized. Right? It's everywhere. What's the answer? Will we ever get to universal single-payer health care? Will we ever get to a, an economy that works for all the people and not just the select few? Can we do it this time in 2020? Can we do it? Can we get the puppet, puppet politicians out of the way? End Trump's nonsense? Right? Right? Try, to, try to pull, get, try to, you know, diffuse the Democratic stealing elections to appoint puppet politicians that let all this continue? Is it possible in 2020? Can we do it? Or is that not the answer? Can we elect our way, can we, can we vote our way out of this problem? People say, ah, oh, you can't vote your way out of it. You need a yellow vest movement. You need, you need Occupy Wall Street. Those are brave souls, man. They came really close, they educated us all. all right? They educated, they educated the masses on the problem. I was on the other side at that time, a little before that. I was, on the, I was down here on the other side of that. And I saw them. I said, you know what? These guys don't know what they're talking about. I go over there, I stop, put my boot in his eye, jerk off. I live living in the park. Low life, right? You don't know what you're talking about, man. You don't know how money works, man. You don't understand. You don't understand the economy. You don't understand nothing. 
because you're, because you're poor and you have poverty in your mind, right? If you had a million dollars, you would understand. You would understand better. I think I understand perfectly well. How about you? Marcus Conti reporting.